Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will talk about Lorentz transformation. Um, this lecture is part of the course called Relativity for All, presented on Unizor.com. Um, I suggest I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website, from the Unizor.com. Um, you just have to go to Relativity for All course, and then it will be part of the Einstein's view. Um, why? Well, primarily because every lecture has textual part, which is basically like a piece of a textbook, exactly related to, to, to the lecture. So you always have some kind of a presentation as a video, and the textbook where everything is more accurately than what I'm doing on the board, written. Um, secondly, the website has certain functionality, like exams, for instance, you can take any number of times you want. Um, there are some other um, aspects of functionality, like supervised studying, etc., on the website. And uh, the site is completely free, uh, no advertisement, no strings attached. And one more thing, the same site contains two prerequisite courses, Math for Teens and Physics for Teens. Now, you cannot really do any kind of a relativity related things without mathematics or knowledge about classic classical physics. Okay, back to business. Um, now, before, as part of this course, we were talking about Galilean transformation and we were talking about certain inadequacy related to usage of uh, Galilean transformation everywhere. And, and uh, in particular, um, Maxwell equations which describes you the electromagnetic field um, are not really um, dealing well with uh, Galilean transformation. They're not invariant, so to speak. So we were talked about this before. Then another thing, constancy of uh, the speed of light in every relation, uh, every in inertial system, um, the speed of light is the same. Uh, it's a constant and it cannot be explained within the Galilean transformation uh, framework. So we need something else. Um, now, there were attempts related to ether um, as the media where light actually um, is, uh, is going through. Didn't really uh, agree with experiments. So, we need some new approach, and this approach was actually um, quite well um, was explained by Einstein in his work in 1905. So, um, the most important thing is that if you have two inertial systems, let's say you have inertial system alpha with coordinates x, y, z, and the time t, and system beta, which I will use lowercase, as coordinates. And again, the Galilean uh, transformation, when this system is moving uh, relative to this, did not adequately explain whatever was going on, especially with electromagnetic fields. So, we need some new way to transform coordinates from one system into another. So, um, we assume that beta system is moving relative to alpha with some kind of a speed v. Um, and for simplicity, um, we think that let's um, consider only the movement along the x-axis. So this is x, y, and z for alpha system. It will be the same, this will be lowercase x, lowercase y, and lowercase z. It's moving along the x system. And at moment, t equals to t equals to zero. So whenever we start counting, whenever we start the clocks in both systems, everything 
uh, basically coincide. So origin of beta is coinciding with origin of alpha. Uh, axes are overlapping each other. So this is one of our uh, beginning uh, point. And then this vector v, if you will explain if you will uh, put this vector in the vector notation in the alpha system, it will have speed v along the x-axis and 0 and 0 along the y and z. So vector v, uh, which explains basically the movement of the beta system relative to alpha, is just directed along the x-axis. So this is what we are having in the very beginning as um, two systems two reference frames, and we would like to convert coordinates from one into another. Now, what kind of rules we have, which we have to basically preserve? There are two main postulates, if you wish. One is the principle of relativity, which means all the laws of physics have to be expressed in a quantitative way, in a, in a way of equations, exactly the same in all inertial uh, systems. Which means if we have some kind of a equation which is true in alpha system, it should be exactly the same equation um, in the beta system, but instead of capital X, Y, and Z, and T, we will use lowercase. So the movement should obey in exactly the same way. The laws are supposed to be the same way. Another postulate is constancy of the speed of light. So the speed of light is the same in uh, these two systems. These are two axioms, postulates, if you wish, which we have to preserve when we are um, describing how these coordinates are transformed into these coordinates if beta is moving along the x-axis of uh, um, of, of alpha. So, these are the rules. Now let's try to find some kind of transformation of coordinates from one system into another, which basically obey these rules. And this is, by the way, a purely mathematical um, task, as far as I am explaining. Uh, Einstein explained it differently with clocks and uh, some people might not actually find it relatively um, well understood or something like this. Um, if we follow purely mathematical um, road, which, which I'm suggesting right now, I think it would be just, you know, math is math, nothing you can do about it. As long as you preserve these two principles, principle of relativity and constancy of the speed of light, well, whatever comes up, comes up. You can't really argue with math, right? Okay, so let's try to do this. Now, I did not mention it, but it's kind of silently assumed that empty space, I mean really empty, like no forces, no fields, no gravitation, no air, no nothing is actually homogeneous, which means one piece of this space, if you wish, empty space, is exactly the same as another one. Um, now, the same thing I should say with the time. It's kind of an assumption that both time and space are, uh, empty space, are homogeneous. Um, they are completely the same in all different directions. So it's isotropy and uh, whatever. There are some terminology about this, I forgot. But in any case, they are the same in all directions and uh, at, at all uh, places in, in the universe, as long as it's completely empty. There are no fields around it, no matter, nothing. Now, why I am mentioning this? Because I would like actually to concentrate on linear um, transformation of these coordinates into these. Because if it's not linear, if it's something like quadratic, if x is supposed to be squared to get a, reg a regular x, um, 
it, it, it disturbs the uniformity of the space. So linear transformation always preserves this uniformity, homogeneousness. Okay? So let's just assume that we are looking for linear equations which transform these coordinates into these. And from the very beginning, as I said, we are moving only along the x-axis. So we can disregard y and z. These y and z is exactly the same as those y and z. And let's just not talk about this. So we'll talk only about x and time. Okay? All right, so we have two uh, coordinates which we have to somehow transform from one into another. Well, let's just write down the most general linear transformation. P times x plus q times t. And t is equal to pqr times x plus s times t. These are the most general general trans linear transformation where p, q, r, and s are completely unknown coefficients. We are looking for these coefficients and we will try to find them based on whatever the postulates we have, whatever the rules of engagement we have. Now, in theory, there might be constant c and d or something like this. Now, I did not put them. Why? Because in the very beginning I said that when time is equal to zero in both systems, the coordinates are equal to zero. So if t equal to zero, x is equal to zero, and this x is supposed to be equal to zero, and this t and this x and this t, which means if we will put any constant non equal to zero, it will disturb our initial condition. So initial condition is that alpha and beta reference frames are coinciding in the beginning of time, and the beginning of time is the same in both cases. Okay. So this is the most general kind of thing. So let's just think about um, how to find these p, q, r, and s coefficients. And we will find them eventually, right? OK. First of all, let's talk about our x. And this is lowercase x. It's moving with speed v, which means this point, which is origin of beta system, so these beta and this is alpha. So the origin of the b beta system is moving with a speed v along the x-axis of alpha system. All right? So what does it mean? Well, it means that if, if x is equal to v times t, then lowercase x is equal to 0. Lowercase x is equal to 0, that's the origin, right? So if I will move with the speed v during some time t, I should really find the origin of the beta system. So this is one of the rules, right? How can we satisfy it? Well, let's substitute t in the first uh, equation, then we will have p times v times t uh, is equal to uh, q times t. And we know that x in this particular case should be equal to 0, right? So. Obviously, it's for every kind of time. t doesn't really matter what t is. So we have the first equation. Uh, sorry, it's plus here. Plus. So we have from here, q is equal to minus p times v. OK? We got the first equation. We need 4, right? OK, next. Next, we will do something related to light. So let's just think again. You have this system and this system. And let's say at the very beginning, at t equals t equals to 0, we will send a ray of light along the x-axis. Or if you wish, we will shoot one photon 
which is you know the smallest piece of electromagnetic oscillations. Now it will move with the same speed in both systems, right? So what is basically the um, equation which describes position of this photon? In one system it would be this equation where C is the speed of light in another system it will be the same C but but different time different uh, space coordinate and, and different time so one system is moving relative to another but equation should be the same that's the principle of relativity and the constancy of the speed of light it's the same in both uh, reference frames all right fine so let's try to again substitute it into these equations and see what happens x is equal to p times c times t plus q t okay uh, t is equal to r times c times t plus S times T. Okay, we got that. Now, since this, so I will multiply this by C. And equate these two. So I will PCT plus QT is equal to RC squared T plus SCT. Now T we can cancel because that's for, for every T. And what we have is the equation PC plus Q equals RC square plus SC. Okay? We've got the second equation. We are looking for basically for four different equations for four different variables which we will be able to solve eventually to get the coefficients, to get the real transformation from one coordinate system into another. Okay, now, let's send the same photon or the same ray of light into this direction. So the speed would be minus c. Okay? What is the equation in this particular case? Well, in one system it's minus ct, and in another system it's minus c, lowercase t. Exactly the same as before. And we will do exactly the same as before. We will substitute this into this. We will have x is equal to p, uh, x is minus ct plus qt. Uh, t is equal to minus r c t plus s t. Uh, then we multiply this by c square c and equate, and we will have, and we will cancel the t the same the same way minus pc plus q is equal to minus rc square plus sc okay 
Am I right? Zero equals to minus RC minus BC plus Q. Why do I have it reverse? Oh, I know why. Because I should put minus CT. So I should multiply it by minus. That's my mistake. And now I can equate them and I will have plus here and minus here. Okay, now that's better. Okay, so we have three equations with three unknown. Okay, I'm not going to solve uh, them now because I have only three. But what I can do, I can express everything, at least three, Q, R, and S, in terms of P. That would be better, okay? Now, V is already established, I mean, Q, Q is already established as a function of P. Okay, now, um, then what? What if I will do with these two, I will add them together, and I will have 2Q equals 2RC square, which means Q is equal to RC square, and uh, since Q is already expressed in terms of P, I will have minus PV equals RC square. Right? Now, if I will subtract them, I will have Q will cancel, RC square will cancel, and I will have that 2PC equals 2SC, from which I have, obviously, S and P are the same. So I have this one. I have Q is equal to minus PV. I have this one, which is S is equal to P. What else remains? R. R means minus PV divided by C square. R is minus PV divided by C square. So everything is expressed in terms of P. Now, this particular system of two equations, it's kind of natural for mathematician to express it in the vector and matrix form. Because if this is vector xt, uh, sorry, lowercase, xt, now out is round bracket, it's equal to matrix pqrs, multiplied by vector x capital and t capital, right? This is how it's written in matrix form. p times x plus q times t is x, r times x plus s times t is t. That's how matrix is multiplied by vector. Now, instead of q, r, and s, I can really substitute these guys, right? So let me just substitute it. So that would be p, s would be also p, and uh, q would be minus pv, and uh, r would be minus pv divided by c square. That's my matrix. Okay, great. So this is the matrix of transformation of this vector into this vector. Now, let's just think about it. If beta is moving relative to alpha, according to these transformations, if it moves towards uh, the increasing of capital X coordinates. At the same time, principle of relativity again, alpha is moving relative to beta with a speed minus V, right? Relative to beta. So, 
just from general consideration, I can say that um, if, if, if these are um, trans if this is transformation of one into another, then from purely um, I don't know physical considerations and principle of relativity, I can say that x t is equal to inverse transformation, which is transformation with a speed minus v relatively to lowercase x and t. And what is uh, how this matrix looks like? If it's minus v instead of v, it would be p, pv, pv divided by c squared, and p. So from purely physical consideration and principle of relativity. If beta is moving relative to alpha with a speed v, then alpha is moving relative to beta with a speed minus v in beta coordinates, right? So the same type of equation, but instead of v, we put, v, we put, we put minus v, which means we change these two signs. We get an inverse transformation. Now, what follows from here What follows is that these two matrices are inverse to each other. So their product, P minus PV minus PV divided by C squared P times this matrix, which is P, PV, PV divided by C squared and P equals to unit matrix 1 0 0 1 this is my unit matrix from which I can derive the equation from which I can get the P that's my last equation okay so what is this equation all right we have four different equations right okay P minus V times this what will be um, P square minus P square V square, right? P times P, no, uh, first, no, P square v, v, no, no, P square V divided by C square plus P times P minus PV square square, right? Minus PV and PV divided by C square. Okay. So, first by first. Now, first by second row. P times PV would be P square V minus PV times P minus P square V. Okay. Now, the second row by first column, minus p square, minus p square v divided by c, minus p square v divided by c square. Am I right? And second by second, would be p square v square divided by c square minus p square v square divided by uh, wait once more p v times p square v divided by c square with a minus and and plus here okay and plus here p times p p square v divided by c square that's how it is and now this times this second row by second column would be okay minus p square v square p square v square divided by c square plus p square 
I right? Am I right or am I right? <coughs> no, something is wrong. P times P. Again, this times this. Uh-huh. Here my mistake. It's minus. Minus PV times PV divided by C square. So that's why it's minus. Okay, now this is zero. And this is the same, and it's supposed to be equal to one and one. So what do I have as a result? I have p square minus p square v square divided by c square is equal to 1. From which p square is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus v square divided by c square. And p is equal to square root of this. And that's what, <coughs> that's what I wanted to get. This is my last uh, variable which I basically expressed everything um, through this. Now, um, usually uh, physicists use the symbol gamma for this particular coefficient. And as a result, we get Q, which is equal to minus P, V, which is equal to minus gamma, D, okay? R is equal to minus P, V divided by C square, which is minus gamma, V divided by C square. And S is equal to... Uh, is equal to p, right, which is equal to gamma. And p is equal to gamma. So we have all my p is equal to gamma. Okay, so gamma gamma is 1 over square root of 1 minus v square divided by c square. D is the speed of beta relative to alpha, C is the speed of light. All these coefficients are like this, so we can have now the x is equal to minus gamma x uh, q minus gamma v t and t is equal to r which is gamma v divided by c square x plus s t plus gamma t. Why did I put minus here? This is plus p. p is gamma. Am I right? x is equal to gamma x minus v t and t is equal to to C, oh, this is minus. R is minus, I'm sorry. R is minus, yeah. So, <coughs> just a little bit differently, x is equal to x minus vt divided by square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared that's gamma, and t is equal to, again, gamma would be, it would be t minus v square c, no, plane v, not v square, plane v, divided by c square, x divided by square root of 1 minus 
d square c square. So these are transformation of alpha coordinates, capital X and capital T, into beta coordinates, lowercase x and lowercase t. And again, y and z coordinates are exactly the same. Lowercase y is equal to capital case y, and lowercase z is equal to capital z. So this is so-called Lorentz transformation. And that's what I wanted to talk about. As you see, it's not exactly such a simple thing. If c is speed of light, and it's a very large number, v, if it's not really very large, what if it's v, v, v is just the speed which we are you know, used to, to move around, then we can say that the ratio v over c is basically almost zero. Now, if it's zero, then you will have x is equal to x minus vt, and t is equal to, if this is zero, just t, lowercase. These are Galilean transformation, if you remember. When beta is moving with the speed v relative to alpha, the new coordinate x would be just, you subtract this, and the time would be the same. So Lorentz transformation is basically, um, is, is changed to Galilean transformation if the speed v is very, very small. So that's why we didn't really have any doubts when in, let's say, up to 19th century, we used these Galilean transformation because our speeds, our experiments were with a very low speed v and relatively to very high c, especially c square. Obviously, these are negligible um, factors. Okay. Well, that's it. Our purpose was basically to derive these Lorentz transformation. And, as I said, if our speeds are not very high, the Lorentz transformation are approximated by Galilean quite well. That's it for today. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. Again, it's on unisor.com. You choose the Relativity for All course and, uh, uh, and Einstein's view, the menu, and among them you will find Lorentz transformation. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.